we've incorporated a lot more worded problems into our curriculum and we have discovered that if we build up a word bank of mathematical knowledge, uh, like uh, mathematical terminologies, that will benefit the children and also it aids in our teaching. So we've certainly taken on a lot more problem solving in our maths lessons. I think in the past, traditionally, we have relied a lot on rote learning, especially with number facts to get our students skilled up. But rote learning, we found, is not enough to help them through these sorts of assessments. So we're getting them to think a lot more creatively and broadly and being able to relate their learning to wider experiences beyond the classroom. And I think that's really important in helping them to be successful in the test. We can have students entering at all different multi-level points, but to find where they're at, and this is where the PAT-M testing comes in, because that actually gives us data of how we can work with those individual students. And it also um, allows us, we work more, way more collaboratively now because we look at the data and we can plan activities for groups. So when we were doing our planning, Louise and I would get together and we would basically look at the target students who were most at risk and we would plan an activity based on what all students would be able to do and then we would allow for extension. So we would look at the, the clusters of students within our R1 cohort and we would set a base task and then we would have extension opportunities so that all children could participate but also work at their appropriate level. It's very easy and I think that's probably the hardest part of mathematics is when you actually put it into, a, 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 into words, so the problems within the words, so then you, you're dealing with comprehension and that really helps us, some of the worded problems, it, that they break them down um, and you can see, you can go through the steps with the mm. kids. So you have got the higher order thing, isn't it? And obviously challenges them, but then you can also break them down. It's to, you know you can see that kids can learn to uh, get those various steps that they need to get into the mathematics that's in the actual question. I I liked how when I was teaching it with the kids, how they scaffolded, yeah. like they automatically scaffolded the question, you know and we looked at highlighting words. Yes. So especially for some of those kids who were struggle, struggling, you know, we highlighted words, what's the key words here, and, and really scaffolded the problem. Um, so I, I, I found that successful for me. Once they get onto, they think they're on the right track, they just go off and do it without actually going back to rereading the question. So they, they, then they, there is a misconception that takes place there. I found the students who did struggle with reading, um, I really had to support those students and breaking down the questions for them. You know, that's why I used a highlighter quite a bit. You know, highlight the important, what is the, what is the question asking of you? I think we've, and we've discussed it numerous times when we've, we've met to plan and, and review what we've been doing, is the biggest focus has been back on teaching maths and being a focus Rather than going into an automatic mode of this is how we do maths, this is what we normally do, we've actually focused on back on exactly what we are teaching. What are we trying to achieve? What are the goals that we want to set for the students? And we're also looking very closely at the literacy of maths. And in order to be able to do worded problems, students need to be able to know what words and their meanings are and their application to different maths concepts. Yeah, and conversation then starts happening around maths, like you've said. Yeah. And so then we also look at, say, keywords that are in a problem for students to work through. And a lot of the time we found that students were able to come up with solutions, but they weren't actually able to name the processes that they were using. So it was another good way to actually target and identify for the students what they were actually doing to um, meet the solutions of the problems. By being open to goal setting, which is all based back from the PAT, it opened us up to different ways of teaching maths and broadening the students' experiences. Um, we were able to work and, and flow on from each other across, yeah. the, across our classrooms yeah. as well. And the natural progressions of the concept became even more evident, not only to us, but to our students. And so that they were actually coming in at different points of the continuum as well. And they could see that. They could see where they were, they were working yeah. towards next. 
and where that had actually come from. And it actually motivated other students that were, say, more at the beginning of the spectrum to work towards, they could actually see what they were aiming for by watching other students and seeing what they were doing. Just going back to the literacy of maths, we also looked at the different words that you can use for equals to. Um, and we did that on the tables with the whiteboard markers, all of the different actual, their words, the children's words, not just the mathematical words. What, what else means equals to or adding or subtracting? So we, we did really well, we think, yeah, with our yeah. students of um, using some different language that thing of that, make sure that children are aware of the terms and know what the terms mean. I think that's pretty important. And also that thing of when you're having a problem, okay, what numbers are important, okay, is the answer going to be bigger or smaller? What, do you, what process, so that thing of for children to realise that often they might be given information, but that may not be the question or they may. So what information have they got? So that thing of being able to get children to kind of We'll do it step by step. The students, I have younger students, so we don't have a laptop each. So we have to use a smart board and work together. So what I actually did was, was print out some of the problem solving, um, make cards and then work in rotations in the classroom. And, um, and uh, by placing the children into different groups, so this group had one task and so forth, with the rotation, they all were exposed to the, um, to the concept in different ways and to the actual language. Uh, and so I actually brought it back into the classroom and we organised board games, always based on, the, on some of the activities that uh, were available to teachers. Teaching mathematics in the classroom is never just the same for all. And I think that's what uh, the resources that are offered through pe the PEM um, uh, allow for that, uh, what do you call it, for that to happen in the classroom. Uh, it's not just about using cards. The good thing about it is that we can come back into the classroom and then use uh, counters and we can use unifix cubes and we can use hands-on things that actually support the learning. So it's not just about the words, it's also about being able to visualise what that um, task requirements are.